to our second episode Dust. of Power Hour Book Club, Book Club. the show where we do a power hour of shots <laughs> while we do a book review slash discussion slash just get drunk and don't know what yeah, we're talking you know, about because we want to be intellectual but like deep down inside we're still like college girls I'm in a way. probably elementary school, actually. Oh, okay. Well, I'm yeah. really like a 73-year-old old lady. Um, I'm both of that, too. Yeah, I'm both of that, too. I'm like, Disney! But, like, going to bed at 8 p.m. Yay! Anyway. Yeah. So the book that we chose for this month, because remember, this is a monthly series, because our livers cannot take this every week. That, and we need to read books, and we have busy lives. So. I just realized this is not the book, this is a Kindle. It's a Kindle, but it has many books on it. Yes. Oh, Tina Fey's Bossy Pants. Her autobiographical Your man hands. memoir. It's funny. Everyone knows she's funny, but I think this takes it to a whole different level. It, yes, because you really get an insight she... into her life and her own personal humor, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and her insecurities. Yes. Which is cool, because she's an everyday woman with insecurities. Yes, she is. Um, <laughs> yeah. You can do it on camera. I just did. Oh. Um, My hair is doing it. Okay. So, what it is. I have an hour set to go. I and today we're drinking Fireball and Apple Cider. cider. Ooh. Apple cinnamon yeah. shots. That's what I'm going to call them. Cinnamon apple shots. Cinnamon apple. Cinnamon. 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 Okay. Oh, my shot glass is over there. Yeah, it is. On the wrong side. Yes. And I am not going to back you yes. up. Just leave it there. No, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to back so I can still reach it. I look like I got a halo in my head. What did you say before? I look like an angel with the sun shining into my blonde hair. I think I said it more eloquently, but yeah. yeah. something like that, in fact. That's what it's All right. Um, so let me start the minute. Did you start the hour? Yes. Yeah. Yes. One, two, three, three. Go. Start. Cheers. 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 Oh. Okay. Who's reading? Uh, I will take the first... We can skip around too. We're, we're, we're gonna, gonna skip short. around. This is gonna be dangerous. This first one is gonna be very short. Uh, it's near the end of the book. Not gonna lie. Um, but it's not really a spoiler in any sense. Um, we know she's alive and she's an actress. We know she's alive. She's an actress. She currently has a show on Broadway based on her movie Mean Girls. It's amazing. I, I saw she, it in April. Yeah, she wasn't in it though. She's not in it, but she did write it. Oh. And her husband okay. wrote the music. <sighs> oh, God, we're going to have to take another shot. <laughs> I forget. Why did we do this again? I don't know. Cheers. Let's start. Let's start over. Sorry. Ow. <laughs> Okay. For those of you um, who didn't watch the pre-show, we both have bruised ribs, so we're going to be making some noises. Yeah, a lot of noises. A lot of... Uh, uh. Um, alright. So this is from the chapter entitled, What Turning 40 Means to Me. Neither of us are 40, but as we stated earlier, we feel like old women anyway, especially with our current injuries. Uh, it, I need to take my pants off as soon as I get home. I didn't used to have to do that, but now I do. You know what? Same Tina Fey. Yeah. Same. Yeah. <laughs> Take off your pants. It's like the best feeling when you just like I mean, peel off your skin, your second skin for Well, the day. besides like taking off your bra at the end of the day. See, I wear bralettes now, so it's not as satisfying. I know. I stopped wearing bras not at work annoying. because I wear so many layers that it doesn't really matter if I wear a bra or not. Yeah. Uh, you have bralettes? Just no bra at all? Just no bra. Because I wear like, I, I have, have the, the I have the under, um, under armor compression. Um, shirts for winter because I get cold. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my 
So yeah. <sighs> By the way, uh, I read this book a couple years ago. I want to say like two years ago. Disclaimer, I didn't finish it. She did. <laughs> I just started reading it like two days ago. And my intention was to reread it, but it's tough when, you know, you're an adult and you got like work or you gotta go to the gym and in order to stay motivated at the gym, I can't read on a treadmill. I'm bouncing up and down too much. I can't keep reading the same book over and over. Do you want me to read a better one? Yeah, why not? I feel like that's the point, read the same book over and over. Well yeah, but I thought it was your turn to read. Oh, we're taking turns or do five minutes? Huh? Oh, to every five minutes. Yeah, so we could, this is our third shot, I think, right? Yeah, it's about to be our fourth in about five seconds. Mm. <laughs> Might as well get ready. <laughs> Clink. I don't know why. I don't know why that took a couple seconds. Repeat. <laughs> okay, I don't know what's going on. I think I did drop it pretty hard today, so. Ugh. All right. Um, she in this book, I have to say that she she goes into her early life and like how she met her husband. Oh, that one's really cool. Yeah. It's, um. It's kind of deep. Um, one of my favorite chapters was kind of like where she kind of goes into like body image a little bit. Mm. Um, I don't. Did you get to this part of the book? Oh. What's that? remembrances of nope. being very, very skinny. Nope. Because, you know, she's a woman of Hollywood. Um, sure. So it's and it's not easy. It's not easy being an average woman of any size, whether you're big or small. Because no matter what, other people are always judging you. Whether you notice it or not. Or care. I don't care. I think we should do half shots. Okay. Let's do half shots. We're not pussies, we just want to be alive. Because I did throw up last time. And that was not you fun. You did a half, right? Yeah, I did a half. Um, so. Do it all. For a brief time at the turn of the century, I was very skinny. This is what I remember about that period. I was cold all the time. I had a pair of size 4 corduroy short shorts that I wore to work in the middle of Manhattan. I loved it when people told me I was getting too thin. I once took a bag of sliced red peppers to the beach as a snack, which I do now. There's nothing wrong with that to me, all right? I regularly ate, ate health food cookies so disgusting that when I enthusiastically gave one to Rachel Dratch, she drew a picture of a rabbit and broke the cookie into a trail of tiny pieces coming out of the <laughs> rabbit. <laughs> oh my god, that's amazing. <laughs> Men I had met before suddenly so paid attention to me, and I hated them all. Sometimes I had to sleep with a pillow between my legs because my bony knees clanking together kept me awake. Mm. Ignore the sounds. It's a dog playing. I had a lot of time on my hands because I wasn't constantly eating. I ran three miles a day on the treadmill six days a week. I felt wonderfully superior to everyone. I didn't have a kid yet, which, uh, we should leave people alone about their weight, being skinny for a while, in parentheses, provided you actually eat food and don't take pills or smoke to get there, is a perfectly fine pastime. Everyone should try it once, like a super short haircut or dating a white guy. <laughs> Shouldn't have been drowned into the world of culture. <laughs> Sorry, it's just circumstance. Hello, I have friends that are guys that want to live with me. I don't know why. I know. I just most of the time I really can't stand what they do. So that's why. They do suck. Most of the time. Do half of them. Um. Yeah. This is Remembrances of Being a Little Bit Fat. I got some of their hottest. 
Uh, for a brief time at the end of the last century, I was overweight. This is what I remembered about that period. My boobs were bigger. Yeah, as they will it's be. It's a pretty uh, good throw. Yeah, I mean, you know, I love my big boobs. Yeah. I hate them most times, but I like them. Now you're in hibernation. Um, I once left a restaurant in the middle of dessert to get to Krispy Kreme before it closed. <laughs> Sounds like something I would actually do. Yeah. yeah. I would do that. Especially if it was ice cream, like DQ Blizzard. No. My stomach has been through enough since this is Thanksgiving weekend. Even though I only liked McDonald's fries, I believed it was more nutritious to make a meal of it and to have two cheeseburgers as well. Mm -hmm. It was really ambitious. I would get a Whopper Junior at Burger King, and then walked to McDonald's to get the fries. The shake could be from anywhere. I could not run a mile. I can't run a mile. Um, for other reasons, besides being out of shape. Um, but... Oh. Uh, I wore oversized men o men's overalls that I loved. Well... Get paper towels. Okay. Pausing. Um, guys who were friends with me did not want to date me, and I hated them for it. On the on these three occasions, I vomited on Christmas Eve from mixing chocolate, peel, and eat shrimp, summer sausage, and cheese. Ooh. No alcohol was involved. I don't know how you would, if, I mean. Chocolate, peel, and eat shrimp? They don't mix the same. No, it's chocolate, comma, uh, oh. peel, and eat shrimp. That's why commas <laughs> and punctuation are important, kids. I mean. Even when you read. You know what's funny, though, is that I threw up on that last time the chocolate, the pe the I, we didn't have any peel and eat shrimp, but we had summer sausage and we had cheese. Alcohol was involved, and I puked my brains out at, at 11 p.m. that night, the last time I did this. Oh, was it 11 p.m.? When I puked. Oh, I was going to skip this one. Yeah. I just took a sip. I was thirsty. Um... <laughs> As a size 12, I took pride in the idea that I was real woman size. Size 12 was the national average. I would boast no matter what magazines tried to tell you. But now the average size is uh, 14, I believe. Most women are size 14 and above. Hey. Um, once while ironing in my underwear, I grazed my protruding belly with a hot iron. I don't know. That's why I don't iron clothes. That I'm fucking lazy. <laughs> So. Uh, we should leave people alone about their weight, being chubby That's for awesome. a while, provided you don't give yourself diabetes. It's a natural phase of life and nothing to be ashamed of, like puberty. We're slowly turning into a republic. Those are her words, not mine. I just want to point that out there. Slowly turning into a republic. Um... My mother is just leaving now. I thought she was leaving 10 minutes ago, and then I thought she was leaving, uh, like, 45 minutes ago. Yeah, yeah, we all did. Did I not ask you the question beforehand? I was like, is your mother but the normally kind of... she says I would be there in a few, she's already on her way. Like, <laughs> I normally, her, that's how she is. When her mother first initially said, oh, I'm on the way, I was like, well, I was no, like... No, she said, I'll be there in a few. Well, that was the first okay, time whatever. Said, and I said, oh, she's probably going to be there very soon. I said, is she the kind of person... That says that, but then, like, doesn't show up for, like, two hours. She's like, not no, 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 Not normally, she's not. I'll be fine. So we waited. Then we made the pre-made, the pre-video. We did just have a death in the family. Everyone's a little Yes. Uh, I'm like, vlogging it. Just a second. Alright, well. Yeah. That's okay. Things happen. Life happens. I don't know if that's the best. Um, it's not thermos container of liquid. It's not. <laughs> but it was what I could find. Well, you should. Because I'm poor and I live no, in a okay. house. Just for future reference, when we come here, I'll just bring my. You should. Uh, you should. You should do it. The. 
Ribs last time. Ow! And how are your ribs? Literally we haven't laughed just, that much. Yeah, well, it's moved a weird way. I just stopped. Okay. Well, I, yeah, I was going to say, because yeah, it's been over five minutes. thing about the Kindle is that when I make a bookmark, I can do this funny thing where I go to menu, and I can go to view notes and marks, and it shows me all the pages that I made highlights on. <gasps> yeah. So like, unlike you, I didn't do chapters because I really didn't need to watch it. Well, I mean, they, they were short little chapters. Um, page one. Hmm. So... <laughs> um, you ready? Alright. This is from like the very, very beginning of her intro where she says, In most cases, being a good boss means hiring talented people and then getting out of the way. In other cases, to get the best work out of people, you may have to pretend you are not their boss and let them treat someone else like the boss. And then that person whispers to you behind a safe wall, and you tell them what to tell the first person. See, I believe that that's actually a really accurate statement. It's like delegating, getting getting out of people's ways so that they can do what they are best at doing. Yes. Everyone has their skills. I just thought that was really interesting, the way she said that. Because I didn't realize that she had just become the producer, the main. Oh, that. Or was she at this point 30 Rock? Yeah. Yeah, 30 Rock. So... That's one section. Do you take a sip? Yeah. Okay. Keep it near your lips because there's only 10 seconds left. Okay, so in the other chapter that I liked is when she's talking about how she first went to the clinic. For her, for her, she got a period. Oh, when she, yeah. And so they ask her all these questions, right? Like, one's like, have you ever been molested? Um, oh, here, hold on. Yeah. I would do it over the plate. Why would no. no? I don't know. Okay, so I so they basically ask all these questions about her sexual experience, and um, then they finally say, or she says, uh, "Here we go." Then she took out a speculum the size of a milkshake machine. Even Michelle Duggar would have Duggar 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 would have flinched at this thing, but I had never seen one before. What's that device? Before I could finish. The nurse inserted the milkshake machine to the hilt, and I fainted. I was awakened by a sharp smell. An assistant had been called in, I'm sure for legal reasons, and was waving smelling salts under my nose. As I came to, the nurse said, You have a short vagina. I think you hit, hit you in the cervix. Wait, when I read that, that made me, like, cry, like, yelp in pain for, like, two seconds. That do you really have funny. a short vagina, or do you have a wide stuff? Just taking her two sips of vagina clothes. Vagina clothes on her glove. Oh, it's not my fault I have a heavy set. Heavy, heavy, heavy flow, flow and a wide set vagina. vagina. Oh my god, so good. It's so good. <laughs> I love that book. I actually just found out that I do have it in print. In DVD form. I'm still using DVDs. Oh, here's a good one. So, a little further down, she's talking about body image. Similar like the book. Who's she? What? What? <laughs> hey! Mojo! Mojo! Whose shoe, shoe is that? Is that? Why do you have someone's shoe? It's definitely not my shoe. No, I think, I think it's Samuel's shoe. Um, oh, sippy. Mm-hmm. Sip, sip, sip. Okay. So, they're talking about like how in the 70s 
like um like Farrah Fawcett and all those people like Lance with blonde hair and like thin body mm-hmm. and like no hips and stuff were like the image. And she goes, but I think the real the first real change in women's body image came when J Lo t- turned it butt style. That was the first time that having a large scale situation in the back boop, was part of mainstream American beauty. Girls wanted butts now. Men were free to admit that they had always enjoyed them. And then, what felt like moments later, boom, Beyonce brought the leg meme. A back porch and thick muscular legs were now widely admired. I'm a fan of this as well. I, I am too, but I hear it's going out of style. Well, it's going in a weird direction in the first place that it's doing that. It should both be like all shapes and sizes are just thick. Cute. <laughs> it is a kind of tea party, I guess. People are gossiping and sipping, sipping beverages. Oh, gosh. Such a ball of life. Mermaid style would not be in my room. So yeah, I liked that. I like how she talked about like she was kind of like sorting out what's happening. Okay. So now every girl Oh, so, and then it turns out all Beyonce and J-Lo have done is to add to the laundry list of attributes women must have to qualify as beautiful. Now every girl is expected to have, and I repeat, if you don't have this, you're not beautiful. Here. Caucasian blue eyes. Oh, well, I mean, that could start. Full <laughs> Spanish lips. A classic button nose. I have a bump nose, so I am classic. Um, hairless Asian skin with a California tan. A Jamaican dance hall ass. Long Swedish legs. Small Japanese feet. The abs of a lesbian gym owner. The hips of a nine year old boy. The arms of Michelle. Wait, hold on a second. How can you have Jamaican dance hall ass and the hips of a nine year old boy? You can't. It's not po- possible at all. It is if you have butt inserts like Kim Kardashian. Gross. The abs of a. Okay, the, hips, the arms of Michelle Obama. And doll tits, which I have no idea what that means. Doll tits are like Barbie tits. Okay. The person closest to actually achieving this look is Kim Kardashian, who, as we know, was made by Russian scientists to sabotage our athletes. Okay, this is ridiculous. Everyone else is drunk. Repeat. I have to pour myself another shot. You missed a shot. No, I didn't. I sipped. I've been sipping. Well, you've missed a sip. Oh, I didn't raise my cup. Whoops. So we'll be behind the bus. Putting a plate here so I can pour. You're reading. Okay. And that was it for that. Oh, even the yellow hairs who were once on top can now be found squatting to a Rihanna song in a class called Gary's Boots Camp in an attempt to reverse engineer a butt. I'm very grateful, you know, I'm grateful that I was born with a big butt. And my hips don't lie. Because they're not Sorry. the hips of a nine-year-old boy. Oh, nine-year-old yeah. boy. Oh, yeah. Nine lips of a husky who wants to go with his elf butt king. Two lips of a reverse engineer. Okay. It's been sprayed and then it's like, oh, it's like a little kiss. I don't smell anything. Oh, and then she starts talking about all of her healthy body parts for which she's grateful. Straight Greek eyebrows. They start at the hairline at my temple and left unchecked will grow straight across my face and onto yours. (laughs) A heart-shaped ass. Unfortunately, it's a right side up heart. The point is at the bottom. Droopy brown eyes designed to confuse predators into thinking I'm just on the verge of sleep and they should come back tomorrow to eat me. Permanently rounded shoulders from years of working at a computer. Gross. Sucks. Um, a round belly that is pushed out by my round posture, no matter how many sit-ups I do, which is mostly none. I can't even do a sit-up. No, but back curls. Is that the only thing you do? No, but back curls. Don't suck me. I won't suck you. Um, 
a small high waist, a wad of lower back fat that never went away after I lost my baby weight. One day in the next 10 years, this back roll will meet up with my front pouch, forever obscuring my small high waist, and I will officially be my mother. <laughs> Wide set knockers that aren't so big but can be hoisted up once or twice a year for parades. That is a clear guy. I like push mine up when I read them. They're pants. But they are pants. Um, I don't know what I'm trying to find. Good strong legs with j big <laughs> gym teacher calves <laughs> that I got from walking pigeon toes my whole life. Wide German hips that look like somebody wrapped Pillsbury dough around a case of soda. My father's feet, flat, bony, pale. I don't know how he even gets around because his feet are in my shoes. I would not trade any of these features for anybody else's. I wouldn't trade all the small lips mouth that makes wait all the small lip mouth that makes me res resemble my nephew. I wouldn't even trade the acne scar on my right cheek because that recurring zit spent more time with me in college than any boy ever did. I like that she accepts herself. I think that's important to think about. Yes, it's important to accept yourself. And to love yourself. Yeah, some people still have trouble with that. And yeah, and you should probably love yourself before you get into a relationship. I don't have that problem. Um, but clearly other people do. <laughs> I love myself just fine. I accidentally stopped the video. <laughs> Hopefully I can fix that. But an that. idiot who loves herself unconditionally. Which is why I do self-deprecating humor. It's the best kind. Uh, oh, and it's time to drink. Yay. I encourage you, those of you at home, to join us in our journey. As long as you're of legal age. 21 and older in the U.S. Is it 18 in Canada? I don't know. The legal age of wherever you live. And Italy, it's quite you lucky. don't have liver problems already. I am pouring. I know. I feel like you found more funny parts and I found more like difficult parts. Uh, it's okay. Um, would you like me to read? No, I'm good. I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay, here we go. Well, take a drink first. <laughs> Okay, so she goes to this party in high school, I believe, with her, like, her friends. She has like 27-year-old friends and stuff at that age, apparently. So she's 27? or No, she's in high oh, school. Oh, yeah, that's right. She's in high school. Oh, because so, it was her job, I think. Um, or something. The theater place. Yeah. So this is this is what she's doing at the, at the party. So first, okay. <laughs> <laughs> or I get rudely interrupted by Simon. <laughs> Brendan had clearly decided to make this party his debut. So Brendan came out after he kissed her. Wait, is that, that's her. Yeah. So she was friends with him and everything, um, but now he's coming out in public. So he wandered through the crowd, performing his one-man show in various locations. Bored, I tried making out with Victor Anthony, a straight kid who was cute but kind of a wang. He was the cream of wheat of making out. I would try it every now and then, thinking maybe I'd like it, but every time, no. He was really a stunningly bad kisser. 
It was as if you took a running start at your mouth. I think I said it too. The poor thing. Like the dead fish one too was really sad. I have to say that I I think I've only dealt with like one bad kisser. Really? Ever in my life. And it was because he didn't he thought it was weird to use talk. He also didn't like my hair. So I don't think he liked my hair. Yeah. <laughs> That being said, let's take a try. Um, so yeah, I, I've been blessed with dealing with very good kissers, so. I mean, yeah. But I, I think I, it's also it's like, like pressure, you, But you it's know? also like in your own experience, like if you're a bad kisser yourself. But like, you know those bad kissers end up with somebody and they're a good kisser to that person. It's like if you're both like yes. fish lips, like. I am like a passionate kisser. Like I will yeah. like push you and pull you. I'm a bad kisser. I like waiting a lot, but it's okay. But no, anyway, but but the point is, <laughs> it just sucks. Like I understand what she's talking about. Like I relate yeah. to Miss Faye. Yes, like this is too much. Can we see this? Can we see like this? We have our faces are visible. Um, Brendan's stage kiss was way more skilled than I was. I went back inside and parked it with Karen and Sharon, who are the two lesbian okay. friends of hers, in the theater living like room, the where Brendan was deep into act two of coming out. The month senior Bonner football team was peering in from the dining area, hearing all of this. Here's a toast to being free of other people's expectations, Brendan monologued, and loving whomever you choose. In the background, stone faced Patty, the woman who took her original boyfriend away from her. Which was quietly giving people coasters. Jesus, she was really not getting it. This evening was actually turning out to be quite boring, but then it happened. One of the drunk girls from the Archbishop Pendergast side of the party wandered into the showtime room and started making out with Alexis Catalano. Everyone froze. Patty looked on, scone-faced. This was unprecedented. Brendan talked a good game, but these two were going at it in public. This was years before every pop singer in the world started fake lesing out at the AVMAs. And so, first of all, I didn't even realize that was a thing. Fake Leslie's out. I mean, like, Anne Heche and, like, some other girl who wasn't a lesbian hooked up with me. Or was it Anne Heche a lesbian at some point? And she, like, decided not to be. I don't, I, I don't think so. I'm not sure. I think she, she like, bounced yeah. back from that. Yeah. So, it simply was not done. What would happen next? Karen and Sharon went into productive adult mode and pulled the two wasted girls apart and took them upstairs to a more private location. Well, the camera itself isn't getting dark. It's the screen. Yeah, I know. Just dimming. Oh. So, just then, Brendan's mom, who was totally unaware of the proceedings, started screaming and throwing everyone's coats downstairs, which shall henceforth be known as an Irish goodnight. Brendan's mom may have perfected my party shutdown move, but it didn't stop me from working at the amateur level. I followed the four women upstairs, ducking the flying parkas because it was almost 2 a.m., my special expanded New Year's Eve curfew. Karen was my ride, and we needed to get a move on. Alexis and Jock Girl were so drunk they could barely function. Karen and Sharon tried to convince them it was a time to call it a night. They would give them a ride home. No, I love you. Jock Girl sobbed as Karen helped her get her coat on. I said I'd be waiting in the car, and they needed to hurry up. Meanwhile, Brendan stormed out of the house, then drove away furious, probably because he had lost the room when two girls started going to town on each other. <laughs> After I'd been waiting in the car 20 oh, minutes God. and missed my curfew, I couldn't control the temper anymore. Ugh. Get the dykes in the car! I screamed down Child's Avenue, banging my shoe on Derek Karen's dashboard and leaving a slight crack. My husband could tell you that I still get this wound up when I'm trying to leave the house on a Saturday morning and nobody in my family has their shoes on. It's not a great quality. This is me. I hate when people are like, let's go, and we start going and everyone just takes their sweet ass time to like get out the door. Oh no, me too. That's like my biggest, yes. biggest pet peeve. I think that was my last night. That's your last day of work. Yeah, because I lost my job. <laughs> but this is my girl over here. I think she's going to be my mom. Oh, is she here? Yeah. Alright, All right. well, we're, we're going to take a short break. Watch these messages. Hey, guys. Um, so, we did film a last part to Power Out Book Club today. 
Um, apparently it just doesn't want to show up on my laptop. It's iMovie or even in photo booth. It doesn't want to play. iMovie is saying that it's there, but that it's importable and that it doesn't really exist. So unfortunately, you don't get the end of our power hour. Um but I hopefully will learn this, you know, kind of editing stuff and this won't happen again. I don't know. I'm new to this. So, um, yeah. So that's the end of Power Hour Book Club. It was only like 45 minutes, but that's not too bad. But we'll see you next month for... Yay!